We hear the word chaos and we think car crashes, explosions, buildings falling down, stocks plummeting, hoarding. We get like a sense of danger. Part of that is composited from media trying to engage us, but part of it's also from real life experiences. There's the end of the world kind of chaos, but there's also other types of chaos. Maybe you've just finished reading a new book and you go to put it on your bookshelf and you realize there's not enough space. You have something that doesn't fit where it belongs. Chaos could be as simple as you have a dilemma, but you don't yet have a solution. You may be uh, trying to buy a home in a really competitive market. You may win the lottery. You may meet someone who makes you feel butterflies inside. Or you could see a car wreck. There's all kind of different things that are chaotic. Part of life, an important part of life, is being able to evaluate these chaotic situations. Then there's the ornate. Find detailed things for the pleasure of looking. Lines made to keep the eye intrigued while it moves around and sees. Seemingly devoid of meaning and lacking any kind of confrontation. Humans across all cultures and times have carved meandering lines into blocks of wood or let their hand dangle along as they capture a fleeting moment in time. Doodles. Decorative. The ornate. The world fades away as the object emits tranquility. So what if we blend these uh, chaotic and ornate concepts together? A combustion of energy calmly holding on to a wick atop a cylinder of wax. The accomplishment of civilization to obtain and control the flame, yet for our time, its simple purpose is an atmosphere of shimmering light while time passes. With neglect, a single candle could cause great destruction, but with a mindful awareness, it can create a soothing trance for the mind to wonder. The ornate lures us in. It suggests a moment of personal pleasure, uninterrupted by the fear of death or lingering responsibility. While we relax, we can appreciate the curves of the ceramic and the painted flowers on the teapot. But only until the chaotic life intrudes, interrupting, changing the course of our train of thought. Photos of beaches, vacations, getting away from it all, those don't make for good art. Good art comes more from a place of now, a place that's leaning into the future, that's placing little calm, contemplative ideas, that as time goes on, these ideas can be shared and passed on. Maybe it's a sensation of oxygen in our blood, or maybe it's a feeling that our memory is finally letting go of negative memories and they'll be lost forever. A cleansing feeling. A snake sitting in the sun, absorbing radiation energy through its skin, its warm blood going to its brain. And right then, maybe there's a moment when it gets a glimpse of the infinite wonder of existence.